Hi, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Steven. You are watching From Soul to Crown. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you're having a blessed day and that this video finds you well. Now, what I wanted to do in this video is to pretty much go over my stone and crystal collection. I don't have a whole lot compared to a lot of other people, but I do have quite a few in front of me. And interestingly enough, I used to collect stones for many, many, many years. I actually started collecting stones when I was just a kid. I remember having this silver grayish pouch that my father gave to me and I would have all of these gemstones in it I remember I had Jade that is the only stone that I specifically remember having and it was kind of in the shape of a teardrop it was in the image of the Buddha and my father gave me a bunch of stones when I was younger and I always had it in a special place in my collection and then eventually I ended up losing it I misplaced it I'm not not really sure where that pouch is at the moment although I remember coming across it a few years ago so it's probably somewhere in my basement I have all of this you know storage and random junk in my basement but um here I have some stones some of which I purchased several years ago some of which I acquired recently and I kind of went down the rabbit hole on YouTube of watching other people's experiences with random stones, whether it be rainbow fluorite, which I have here in front of me, or moldavite, which I have right here, or lapis lazuli, and just reading into the various chakras with which each one of these stones is associated. Now, I do want to preface this video, this collection video, by saying that I don't necessarily know a whole lot about the different chakras. I know that they all pertain to a different endocrine gland. I do know what they are. I know the color that represents each of the seven chakras and how they're aligned. But to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of experience dealing with uh, crystals when it comes to you know benefiting from their energy or absorbing their healing properties although I have experimented a lot with lapis lazuli lapis lazuli is of course connected to the throat chakra and it makes it easier for you to communicate and so as a teacher I do often bring it to work with me and I just carry it in my pocket or sometimes while I'm teaching I hold it in the palm of my hand and um, this is something I've done just a few times and uh, I do find that I have an easier time communicating but again I don't know if it's just a placebo effect but uh, the um, power of quartz crystals has been proven on a scientific level uh, it shows that they are actually capable of producing electricity when they're put under mechanical stress uh, which is why they are used in um, clocks you know they help with in, in regulating uh, you know the beat of the clock and uh, and watches as well and so I'm not going to get into a whole scientific in-depth discussion on you know crystals and and stones and how they work um, a lot of times I think I'm a bit more interested with the anecdotal experiences of stones and crystals. I do want to be reassured that they work and that it's not just a placebo effect, but I've heard and read uh, in so many different sources and, and articles and publications and blogs that you really have to believe in the stone in order for it to work. And for as long as you're a skeptic, you're sort of closing yourself off from benefiting from the beneficial properties of these stones and crystals. So I don't wanna waste a whole lot of time. I'm just here letting you know that, you know, I don't have a whole lot of experience with stones and crystals. If anything, they just look pretty and I love collecting them. And I do have a really young daughter at home and she loves looking at them and she loves playing with them as well. So I did my best to kind of put them in a color order. And I guess we're starting with white and this first one here is how light now i like this one kind of has a bit of a marble look it almost has this chalky appearance and it really looks like an expensive stone but how light from the uh little bit of research that i did online actually happens to be a fairly inexpensive stone it's not as expensive as like um moldavite or something like that but this one is relatively inexpensive and this is how light uh, the next type of stone that I have here, and I have a few different varieties of it. I have the tumbled stone variety and I have the raw variety, but this is clear quartz. And so I hear that this is a really good stone to use if you want to pair it with other stones. 
and so I will need to do a little bit more experimentation when it comes to that, but I have clear quartz. I also have rose quartz, which uh, can be identified by its distinct pink hue. And I also have one that's been turned into a bit of a necklace so I can wear it around uh, my neck if I wish to. Uh, at the time I am wearing green aventurine just because this is what is uh, closely connected with the heart or the heart chakra and green is really good for uh, cleansing, clearing and healing and so I like to wear this around the heart. Again, if, if I'm only benefiting from the placebo effect then, then, then so be it. Uh, but I'm really enjoying sort of diving into this journey, learning more about it. And like I said earlier, I am very open-minded when it comes to my experiences. And then of course we have amethyst. And here I have a geode, which my daughter finds especially pretty. And I also have the uh, tumbled variety. And I have the raw variety as well. And this has this um, sort of notable purple color. <laughs> And with the amethyst especially, it's connected to the Ajna chakra, which is the third eye chakra. And so I mentioned in a previous video on this channel that sometimes I like to use these crystals and I put them under my pillow when I go to sleep at night. Uh, maybe sometimes that might lead to me having more vivid dreams or uh, remembering my dreams better when I wake up. And uh, you know, the third eye is responsible for the body's production of melatonin, which is why I try to be very sort of um, deliberate when it comes to my use of amethyst. And here we have fluorite. I actually thought this was amethyst initially because it does have a bit of a purple hue in it, but this is fluorite. And then here I have rainbow fluorite and I have four of these. So I have a little bit of rainbow fluoride here, which I, th I think these look really, really cool. I like the coloration inside them and the various patterns. And you know, I've seen some pictures online too, and they look really, really nice. And then here is one of the oldest stones that I have in my collection. I must have purchased this one back in 2014. So I've had this for about six years now. The same thing goes with my green aventurine. And there was another stone in this collection that I purchased many, many years ago. Oh, it's this amethyst. I have two of the tumbled stone variety. And then I also had pyrite, but I ended up giving it to a friend of mine. So I had to repurchase that one. But uh, this is connected to the throat chakra, the endocrine gland that this is the most closely related to is obviously the parathi parathyroid and the thyroid gland. And so, I know of a lot of people when it comes to crystal healing, they like to put the stone directly on their throat, uh, either when they're meditating or when they're lying down in a peaceful state. Uh, that's something that I've tried only once or twice. Uh, it's something that I need to experiment with a little bit more. Uh, the next stone that I have in my collection actually does look quite similar to uh, Lapis Lazuli, uh, but this one is so delight. And it almost has a similar coloration to it. It has blue. The blue happens to be a little bit darker, but it also has fragments of gold, brown, and even like a little greenish sort of a vibe to it. But this is a really nice looking stone as well. I just think it's easily confused with lapis lazuli, or I easily confuse it with lapis lazuli. And uh, this next one is probably one of the more uh, special ones, uh, according to a lot of people online, the videos that I've watched and the blogs that I've read. Uh, this is called Moldavite. And obviously this is said to have a much higher frequency. And this is a stone that it, it just looks really, really pretty. I'm happy to have it in my possession. I cleanse it quite often by, you know, I guess imagining a white light around it or even just leaving it out in the sunlight or uh, the moonlight. And this is a type of tectite glass that was formed in the Czech Republic as a result of a meteor impact about 15 million years ago. And so this is a really interesting stone. If anything, it has a certain collector's appeal to it. I recently ordered another one on Amazon, which is somewhere between 15 and 20 carats. And so I'm curious to see what sort of an effect I have uh, when I acquire that one. But yeah, I'm actually really enjoying, uh, I guess some of the synchronicities that have happened to me when I started to uh, hold this, you know, either in the palm of my hand. Sometimes I just like to keep it very close to my purse and I might put it in my pocket or something like that. But this is a really cool one and I really do enjoy this one. And that's, uh, that is Moldavite. The next one is Appetite. 
uh, not to be confused with uh, what you have before you eat a big meal, A-P-A-T-I-T-E. And this has this bluish green hue to it. And I think this actually looks really pretty, but not as pretty in my opinion as Amazonite. And Amazonite almost has these vertical ridges on it. And it just looks really cool. The texture of it, it's a bit heavy as well. And so I, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth when I purchase Amazonite. Uh, but this is another really cool one. My daughter really likes this as well. And then I also have Green Aventurine. And of course, Green Aventurine is really good for the heart chakra. And uh, it's one that, again, I haven't really used. I have put it underneath my pillow a few times. I don't, I can't really say that I've, you know, noticed any difference but with using it, but I have that. I also have a bunch of Labradorite. Labradorite is really cool because it actually features, it's a bit fluorescent in the way that it looks. It has some properties of blue, properties of green and teal and aquamarine and is multicolored and it's just a really pretty gemstone. Here I have green opal. It's interesting for a lot of these, I had to consult an online stone identification chart because I, to this day, I actually have, uh, I have one in my possession. I don't know what it is. And so I put it off to the side and initially I thought it might have been like a moonstone or something like that, but it's very cloudy. And so I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I remember purchasing it uh, several years ago at a store or um, a stone shop in my local mall called East Meets West. They sell a lot more than stones. They have incense and they have uh, home decor and stuff like that. But that just happens to be one of the stones that I purchased. This one is pyrite, also known as fool's gold. And it actually looks like it looks like gold, uh, not as yellow, not as brilliant, but it definitely has a sheen to it. And the next one is citrine. I was actually a little disappointed. I was expecting this one to be a bit more yellow. Sometimes I look at it and it looks like clear quartz. Uh, but when I purchased this from a seller on Etsy, it was individually wrapped. And so it does say citrine on it. And you can tell it actually has a bit of a yellow tinge to it as well. The next one is Moonstone, and this one has, um, it almost kind of looks like opal. It has a little bit of a foggy appearance to it, but it also has some inclusions, which look pretty cool. A bit of it uh, looks kind of burgundy or reddish, uh, but it also has this sort of spider web pattern to it. It looks really cool actually, and this is Moonstone. And then we have Red Aventurine. And of course you have different types of aventurine. This just so happens to be the red variety. And now we're making our way down, of course, to the root chakra. We have the sacral chakra. And then right before that we have, uh, and right after that, I should say, we have the root chakra. Here I have a little bit of ruby. And of course this is quite raw. It's not as red and vibrant as some of the other more polished varieties of ruby. Here we have Rhodonite, which is said to be really good for reconciliation. And of course, one of the most pretty stones and one of the most beautiful stones is Tiger's Eye. I love the way that this refracts light and it's so reflective depending on how you look at it and the angle at which you hold it. It just looks like an amazing, amazing stone. And of course, this is the tumbled stone variety. I would say the raw form of it, which I also have, is not as pretty. It's a bit more dulled out, if I may. But uh, so I would recommend that if you do want it just for a collector's um, standpoint, I would recommend getting the, uh, you know, tumbled stone variety. Here we have red jasper. And then finally, I keep wanting to say black tourmaline, but it's not black tourmaline. This is obsidian. So I also have obsidian, which is said to be a very grounding uh, sort of a stone. And a lot of people actually also recommend that you have this with you at the same time as your moldavite. And so whether you're putting it underneath your pillow or you're gonna hold it in your hand or you're gonna put them in your pockets, it's usually recommended that you have both of them with you at the same time to sort of, not necessarily amplify each other's uh, effects or frequencies, uh, but for the you know darker stone to sort of tone down the effects of the moldavite, which some people say can come across rather strong. But um, I do want to thank you all so much for tuning into 
this channel and I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Obviously, if you have experience with any stones, please do let me know what they are. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you have any favorites, also let me know what they are and if you've had any experiences with any specific stones. Uh, maybe there are some stones that I don't have that you would recommend that I go out there and purchase please let me know what they are and I would be more than happy to look into it. Thanks again for watching. If you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could consider subscribing to this channel. All you have to do is click that red button in the corner and this way, whenever I do upload future videos, it'll get delivered straight to your feed and you never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. Love you all and we'll see you next time. Bye.